On the 20th of December 2001, the sixth and final episode of Walking with Beasts Mammoth Journey was released. This episode is set 30,000 years ago in the late Pleistocene of Western Europe during the last Ice Age, or more specifically, the last Glacial Period. The episode starts in November, on the cusp of an Ice Age winter, with the narration explaining how over the last 50 million years the world has been getting slowly colder, something we have been seeing throughout the series. Another factor, however, has pushed the planet's climate over the edge, a slight shift in the Earth's orbit. This is a real-life phenomenon known as a Milankovitch cycle, changes in an object's orbital eccentricity, aka how an object's orbit periodically changes from that of a perfect circle, which in Earth's case takes it slightly further from the Sun. This, combined with Earth's already cooling climate due to the arrangement of the continents and ocean currents, has led to an ice age, with cold glacial periods where ice sheets expand like is seen here, and warmer interglacial periods where ice sheets recede like we live in today. All this to say that life has had to adapt to very cold and dry conditions, which leads us to the main star of this episode, Mammothus Primogenius, the woolly mammoth. But you probably could have guessed that from the title. The model is perfect. Almost. But I'll get into that one little problem later on. The shaggy fur looks superb, the texture on the tusks looks wonderful, and their behaviour is spot on from what we know, which is quite a lot compared to other extinct creatures thanks to frozen carcasses and cave paintings. They are portrayed as very intelligent and caring herd animals, just like modern elephants. We see a small herd migrating south for the winter, and I love the attention to detail with them leaving footprints in the snow as well as them having snow on their heads and back. One of the animals suddenly falls into a frozen pond, covered by snow. There is brilliant attention to detail as she gathers more snow on her face after she falls in. We also see the brilliant animatronic. Her herd mates immediately turn to address the situation and to comfort her. Much like in Next of Kin, we see live action footage of modern animals in this episode. As they had evolved by this time, the narration states that scavengers have started to arrive. Here we see a grey wolf, but also early humans, and I really like how they are not given special treatment amongst the other scavengers, as at the end of the day, we are just animals too. Sadly, there is nothing the mammoths can do for her, and have to leave her behind, or else get caught in the harsh winter, as the title appears. A very sad but interesting note to start out on. We then cut to July in the North Sea of all places, as the narration explains how because there is so much water frozen at the poles, sea levels have dropped dramatically, and this region is now a vast grassland, part of the Mammoth Steppe a giant biome of dry grassland and open woodland, stretching from Spain all the way to Canada. We truly see the extent of it with an awesome effective 360 panoramic shot, showing us some female Megaloceros, which I'll discuss more later. Another superb detail is that during the warmer months, mammoths were believed to have molted, and here we see them with shorter hair, which is fantastic. However, we also see the single error with the mammoth model, the tusks of the males. They are shown to overlap, however this trait is only known in male Columbian mammoths. This isn't to say that the tusks of woolly mammoths couldn't overlap, but there's no evidence of this. We then see live action footage of saiga antelope and bison with CGI mammoths edited in. While some shots are pretty convincing, others are quite grainy and stick out from the rest of the episode unfortunately, but it's not a big issue. We then get a proper introduction to the early humans referred to here as Cro-Magnons. This name has fallen out of favour in recent years, and they are now more commonly referred to as Early European Modern Humans, or EEMH. Their depiction here is spot on. Their actors look to be roughly of the right ethnic group. We see them constructing huts from mammoth remains, which is known, as well as covering their skin in ochre to keep biting insects at bay. The narration states that they rarely actively hunt mammoths, preferring smaller animals. We then get an awesome time-lapse shot of animals 
grazing before a montage of male mammoths mating with as many females as possible. In the next scene, we cut to early autumn and see the verdant plains now covered in snow. The narration explains how, despite evolving from hairless elephants from Africa, mammoths are adapted in a multitude of ways to the cold. Their long coats of hair, thick layer of fat, short ears and tails to avoid heat loss, all aid in keeping them insulated in such low temperatures. We then see the remnants of the human huts in the snow, with the narration stating that they have migrated south for milder conditions, and the mammoths will too to the Alps, 400 kilometers away. I love how the mammoths take steps in time with the music, by the way. In the next scene, we have a really cool shot as the mammoths reach Belgium in the background, and in the foreground, we see a pair of rutting male Megaloceros. Known colloquially as the Irish elk, it is actually a species of deer, the males of which have the largest antlers of any known deer. Here they are shown competing for a harem of females, which is thought to be correct for this species. The model also seems to be pretty much flawless as they exhibit sexual dimorphism with females lacking antlets like many modern deer. Awesome stuff. One male backs down, however, they have both been trapped by human hunters. A cool touch is that like next of kin, human vocals are added to the soundtrack and it's a great and fitting addition. The hunting party chase them towards the trees as their antlers prohibit them from entering the tight spaces. One male escapes by jumping over one of the hunters, but the other is trapped as the hunters throw their spears at it, making it bleed to death. These are accurate weapons for these people and it's believed they did at least sometimes hunt larger game. The narration also states how they will have to quickly take what they want as they know other scavengers will eventually arrive, showing they themselves have much to fear too. The puppet also looks fantastic, a very cool scene. We then cut to the mammoth herd progressing towards the Alps, with the narration explaining how a male calf is struggling with his first trip and the cold, with the narration alluding to many calves never seeing their second winter. Alongside them, we see humans migrate into the vast caves of the Alps, wisely giving the mammoths a wide berth. We later see the calf struggling to keep up. His mother stays with him, but the herd can't wait. The pair are also being stalked by a Panthera spalea, the Eurasian cave lion. Like I said in my review of Sabretooth, this is a retooling of the Smilodon model. Whilst on the whole, the model is pretty good, there are a few problems. First of all, it seems like they didn't shrink the saber teeth enough as the canines are oversized. It should also have a bigger tuft on the end of the tail. As for the fur, recently discovered hair samples have found that cave lions had a coat of a similar colour to modern African lions, though slightly lighter. It likely wouldn't have been purely white or had a spotted coat as shown here. However, these discoveries were made well after production. We then see a lone male mammoth also migrating. He passes by a pair of lions scavenging on a dead human. Again, I like how early humans aren't given special treatment and are treated just as animals. The narration then explains that as mammoths are social animals, migrating herds will often merge. As the forests become denser, we see an enormous herd of mammoths has formed. The cinematography of this episode is simply superb. As such, the mammoths reach the Alsace region on the border of France and Germany, and as they near the Alps, the terrain shifts from flat plains to brilliant hills and valleys that are very cool looking to me. It is here that we meet another species of early human, the Neanderthals. The portrayal is spot on. The actor's makeup looks amazing, and the fur clothing looks very authentic too. Their short stature and wide noses are also correct designed to insulate and warm the air they breathe. Honestly, the only issue here is that they became extinct 10,000 years before this episode takes place. However, their extinction may have been caused by interbreeding with modern humans. You could give this episode the benefit of the doubt that this is just a particularly Neanderthal-like population of modern humans. Regardless, we see a man collecting wood, as Neanderthals don't migrate, but rather tough out the winter in caves. This cues the introduction of another non-migratory animal, Celodonta, the woolly rhino. I have no criticisms to speak of regarding this animal. It is flawless in both appearance and behaviour. The hair detail is as excellent as that of the mammoth too. Amazing stuff. The rhino has poor eyesight, but smells the Neanderthal. He charges after him in slow motion. The Neanderthal somehow avoids being skewered, but is knocked over by the rhino, 
falling hard to the ground. Seeing the poor guy cough up blood is really impactful, and I'm glad this episode doesn't hold back on showing just how tough Ice Age life was for early humans. In the next scene, we see the mammoths arrive at the foothills of the Alps. Here, the dense forests shelter them from the harsh winds. Whilst they normally feed on grass, the mammoths switch to browsing on the trees as their usual food is covered in snow. We also see great use of practical effects with the mammoth's trunk grasping at spruce leaves. We then get a heartwarming scene as we see the mother and calf have at last caught up with the herd. We then cut ahead to May as we see the snow has melted and meadows of flowers have appeared. We see that the woolly rhinos have also molted, another great detail. We also see that the mammoth calf has made it through the winter and that the herd has a new member in a little female. I like that we also see two male rhinos challenging each other in a non-violent way, scraping their horns on the ground until one surrenders the territory. Once again, the visuals this episode are simply stunning. The next scene is very charming, as we see the mammoth struggling with biting insects again, but they now have a solution, a shower of mud. I do love the line, or maybe mammoths just do this for the fun of it. I feel like a line like that wouldn't have had the same effect in walking with dinosaurs for example, as both the relatability and humour we associate with mammals would most likely not carry over as effectively to dinosaurs. It highlights a key difference in Beast's presentation compared to dinosaurs, and I think the more light-hearted tone works in its favour. Likewise, I think Dinosaurs' slightly more serious approach works better in that series too, and I love both, as it makes them very distinct. We then see the mammoths returning to the northern plains, however, the Neanderthals have been waiting for them. The Neanderthals wait until nightfall, where they use fire torches to force the herd back towards a cliff. I remember this scene very vividly from when I was a kid. The two mammoths falling off the cliff really stuck with me. I believe this scene was inspired by the finds at La Côte de saint brelard I probably messed that up royally, where it was believed a group of Neanderthals drove mammoths off a cliff to kill them. Recent studies, however, have contested these findings. Regardless, the Neanderthals butcher their kills. A cool detail I only just noticed is that the next morning, you can hear hyenas. There were indeed cave hyenas at this time, so I wonder if they were intended to be added to this episode in some capacity. We then see the herd return to the northern plains, but sadly, the matriarch was killed by the Neanderthals. Her sister now leads the herd. The narration then explains how despite being extreme survivors, the mammoth's grassland and habitat will disappear, and them along with it. The narration also adds that the humans have a different future ahead of them, as they are able to shape the world around them. We then see a small human settlement where a man is carving a mammoth out of ivory. This then transitions to the same artifact in the modern day Oxford University Natural History Museum. The ending narration is amazing. One day they'll look back on all this. We have since built museums to celebrate the past and spent decades studying prehistoric lives. And if all this has taught us anything, it's this. No species lasts forever. We then gradually zoom out until we can see the Earth from space, truly encapsulating just how far the world has come, all to an amazing rendition of the main theme. What a fantastic way to end things off. Wow. Mammoth Journey really impressed me. I remembered liking it a lot, but not this much. I was engaged all the way through. I know I said in my review that Sabretooth was my second favourite episode behind Whale Killer, but honestly, I think Mammoth Journey might have taken second place. The story was wonderful, the effects were brilliant, and the visuals were stunning. The ending was also superb, and I think every creature was used effectively. Because I did it for Walking with Dinosaurs, I figured I would also rate the episodes in the order I enjoyed least to most. In sixth is Next of Kin. Like I said in my review, I have quite a few problems with this episode, the main ones being the effects and underuse of creatures. That said, it is still great. In fifth is Land of Giants. I think the first half is excellent. However, the second half lets it down for me, as it's basically all focused on just the Indricathirs, and I wish the other creatures got some more time in the spotlight. In fourth is New Dawn. 
many years ago, I remember this one being my favourite episode in the entire Walking With series. I still think it's excellent, but I think most of my issues are related to the Gastonis. I mentioned how it's a bad victim of reused footage, but also the kill scenes involving it were also needlessly brutal in my opinion. Both the Propaleotherium and, need I mention, the ants? The tone is just a little off-putting to me at times, but overall I think it's a great episode. In third is Sabretooth, oddly enough. This episode has the best story in my opinion, and the creatures were awesome too. Honestly, the only justification I have for it being in third is that I think the remaining two have slightly better creature utilisation, because I think this episode is awesome, and the top three are very close for me. In second is Mammoth Journey. I was so impressed by this episode and loved every minute of it. The creatures are all wonderful, it looks beautiful, and the story is great too. It's just solid. And number one for me is Whale Killer. This episode does everything right to me. The story is interesting and engaging, the environments are gorgeous, the creatures all look fantastic, and whilst the Andrew Sarkis is a bit funky in the accuracy department, the majority of the errors were found long after production. This episode is an example of perfect creature utilisation in my opinion. Each and Every one of them has seen showing strengths and weaknesses. I adore the time period and location, and all of these things combined to make it my personal favourite. Walking with Beasts as a whole was fantastic, and a very worthy successor to Walking with Dinosaurs. It took the obscure creatures of the Cenozoic and made them out to be just as incredible as the famous dinosaurs the public were already so familiar with. I think I might like Walking With Dinosaurs just a little bit more, but Walking With Beasts was phenomenal, and it has been an honour to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this amazing documentary series. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Bye bye now.